Good morning, Peter Gertz, I'm a psychiatrist. When patients talk about death, do you talk about death with your patients? Do you talk about sex with your patients? We can easily lose information about patients if we ourselves are not comfortable talking about things with patients. And in general, some things that we take for granted, like the meaning of death, they can be quite difficult to understand or agree on what is death. So things that are quite basic can also be quite difficult to understand and different people may have different understandings of death, for example. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross was a psychiatrist who studied death quite a bit, death and dying, and wrote about that. What I'm suggesting is that as doctors, you be as comfortable as possible talking about death and sex and other things that might be difficult to talk about potentially, because when you're not comfortable or as comfortable as possible, then you can miss an aspect of the patient's life, which can be important. Death is something that is on the table all the time. Recently, a patient of mine died unexpectedly and he was not that old. I'd been seeing him for many years. So when I realized that he died, I called his wife and I left a message. I wasn't able to reach her, but death comes up essentially all the time or very frequently. Patients may bring up the death of a partner, of a mother, of a son, husband, pet. They may talk about their own potential death. They may make a suicide attempt. They may have suicidal ideation, actively wanting to kill themselves or passively wanting to die. They may have come back from death. So there can be various aspects that patients talk about regarding death. You may have, well, now they've pretty much all died, I think. You may have a patient who was in a Nazi concentration camp. And on the other side, you may have patients who want to kill someone else. So there are different aspects of death that come up. And what is death? Each person may need to come to their own understanding. And a patient's belief about, beliefs about death can be important regarding potential suicidal thinking. Because if a patient believes in a spiritual world, some kind of existence or life after death, believes in God, that can potentially help them not to attempt suicide. And also, of course, if they think of their loved ones, which is another aspect that can help them not to attempt suicide. Another aspect of patient's beliefs, which can be very strong and also powerful, is as an example, a patient of mine many years ago when I was an intern was scheduled for routine surgery. And she said in a very anxious state, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And sure enough, she died after the surgery, shortly after the surgery. So our own beliefs can be very powerful. Another patient I recall is a patient many years ago whose wife had died. And he said, when I talked to him, he said, my wife came back to me last night and we had sex. And I didn't know what to make of that. The patient did not seem psychotic. So we want to be open-minded and listen to patients and for example, what the patient I just mentioned said may point in the direction of possibly our essence as human beings not being material, being more of a spiritual nature, potentially. Again, everyone has their own beliefs and you want to come to your own. And if we do feel comfortable or reasonably comfortable talking about death with patients, we can learn a lot about our patients and it seems that death is part of life and vice versa. Thank you.